Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Faith with Love Fellowship Church. We are delighted to have you here in the building, and we are very happy to have you join us on the live feed. Uh, we welcome you. Please uh, participate. Amen. I, even though some of you are not able to leave your homes and uh, some of you uh, are, are watching online because you're far from here, uh, which is perfectly fine. That's why we do these live streams for you. But um, make sure you participate. Amen. Uh, stand because God is worthy to be praised. Lift your hands and sing the songs and bless the Lord. Amen. And uh, we're going to enjoy ourselves in the presence of God here today. Let's begin with a word of prayer, and then we're going to begin. Father, we love you so much. We're so grateful that you have given us the greatest gift uh, that could possibly ever be given, the gift of your Son, your only begotten Son. And Jesus, you came and rescued us from the darkness, from hell, from the grave, from hopelessness, from frustration, bitterness, and all the things that the enemy had us in bondage to, uh, sickness and disease and poverty and lack and want and, and, and anger and, and frustration and resentment and bitterness and the list goes on and on. And Jesus, you came to set us free and to know you and to know the peace that you offer to us, that peace that passes understanding is the most amazing, remarkable, wonderful gift we could ever have received. And we're so thankful, Lord, that it wasn't our idea, but it was your idea. And we want to bless you and praise you and thank you. May our songs uh, bless you and honor the name of the Lord Jesus. May our time of ministry in the word uh, advance the kingdom of God, promote the, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and any ministry today may it all be done to your honor, to your glory, for the good of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our first song is called You Alone Can Rescue. Amen. Thank you. 
Jesus has done for us. Amen. This next song is going to remind us, is lead us to the cross to remind us exactly what the Lord has done and to continue to remind ourselves to live in the light of this truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. I know, shut the system for a second. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sorry, technical difficulties. One moment. Amen. Just worship God. Amen. We don't need music. We don't need songs. We have it. We have it all. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, O God. We worship you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We honor you, O God. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, O God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. decide to go with the Lord. Amen. And I choose my words very uh, deliberately. The, cheap, the further, the deeper that you choose to go in the Lord is a consistent and a constant I fall down to my knees I lay me down. Amen. Me. My way of thinking. It's all about me. What's in it for me? You, you lay it down. 
You make a decision. I rid me of myself because I belong to you. So it's a, it's a, a continuous um, making the decision to live right, to live clean, to live pure before Him, to, to not allow things to compromise you in any way, shape, or form. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, we remember what He did. Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Remember. Amen? Redemption's Hill, where your blood was spilled for my ransom. Everything I once held dear, I counted all as loss. Amen? The Apostle Paul says, I consider it all loss but to know Him and the power of His resurrection. Amen? And that's a prayer of consecration. That's a prayer of sanctification. Amen? And, and God loves uh, that. That honors Him. That pleases Him. That's His will for us, each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. That he would, be, uh, he would be everything to us. And that uh, we would think very little of ourselves in the manner of speaking uh, what's in it for me. Amen? Amen? We can't think too little of ourselves because we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. We have been given power of attorney the name above every name. Amen? We have been given the Word of God. We have been given the great and mighty Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We are blessed beyond measure. We are amazingly blessed by God. Hallelujah. But again, it's all because of Him and it's all for Him. Hallelujah. So, Father, we love you and we thank you. Help us, Lord, to live our lives in the remembrance of all you have done for us through the blood of Jesus. And then to choose on a regular basis to lay me down, to fall down on our knees and to honor you, to please you, to say no to the things that you say no to and, and, and say yes to the things that you say yes to. And we praise you, we bless you, we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.
That's the cry of our hearts, O oh God, that in all we do, we would honor you. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, everyone. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Continue to bless him. Continue to love on him. Receive his love this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, Nick. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Sorry. Hallelujah. shared a little bit of this on the Wednesday evening, I guess. Uh, I've been getting many calls to do funerals. And uh, you would think, you know, what's going on? But their funeral homes are very busy. I don't, I don't have an explanation. But I get calls to do, and, and many of them are uh, non-religious. Meaning that people, uh, when I try to locate where they're at, you know, a Christian funeral is easy. I can just encourage them that that person is in glory with the Lord Jesus and there's peace because of that. And if a family is, is a family of believers, uh, that kind of a funeral is, is easy. Uh, the funerals that are people that you just don't know and you ask, you know, were they, were they uh, Christian? Were they, um, did they ever talk about a relationship with Jesus and and um, a couple of these la last ones was no they they really never did and some of them you know they were when they were very very young they went to church but then after that they left and resentments and all kinds of things you know people have all kinds of excuses uh, why do I call them excuses is that being mean no because the Lord is good amen and if you really knew him or get to know him you would never be resentful towards him and if people have offended um you know i tell people all the time people are going to offend you because people are people but the lord can never and will never amen he might confront you and you might take offense but he's not going to offend you are you with me my brothers and sisters and so it makes it a little bit more difficult for me, but I commit myself uh, because I, I, I say to myself all the time, I'm not there to speak to the dead, I'm there to speak to the living. And um, I, I did one where, uh, you know, they were pretty adamant, they did not want, um, uh, you know, a lot, a long uh, service. The person would have liked to just be cremated and have a barbecue, that was what they said. But again, you got 60 people gathered here to um, support the family and mourn the family. So I um, take it very seriously and I uh, preach the gospel. Amen. Um, I, I do it with compassion, but I do it uh, very, very clear. And then I give an altar call. I don't ask them to come forward, but I, I share it with them how to receive Jesus. And I pray with them to receive Jesus. And um, I, I came up with something by the Spirit of God as far as I was concerned. And I... I word it this way and it'll help as, as well. Um, <clears throat> I tell them that if uh, God forbid they were in a boat and they the boat capsized or they fell overboard and they find themselves out in the deep and uh, or if uh, they get are swimming in the ocean, they get caught in a riptide and they get pulled out into the deep water or again, God forbid, if they're in a flash flood, their house is washed away and they're in danger of drowning. I mean, you know, there, there's, real, there's real cause for alarm here that you're, you're gonna die if you don't get any help. But if I come by in my helicopter and I throw you out a rope, at that moment in time, you know, who you are, the color of your skin, how much money you have, who you know, you know, uh, they become uh, null and void. The only thing that matters at that moment is what you do with the rope. And I encourage, you know, you, you, you take a hold of it with both hands, your feet, and your teeth. You wrap it around yourself. You commit yourself 100% to that rope. Because if you let it slip through your fingers or ignore it, you're going to die. 
That's all there is to it. And I shared that when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, or when you stand before God, he's going to ask you, what did you do with my son? And so at that moment in time, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, how much money you have, who you know, what you've done, any of those things. All that matter is what have you done with my son? And, uh, and so I, I share with them the importance of that, that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him will not perish. He sent his son not to condemn the world, but that through him the, son would be, the world would be saved. And then I tell the other side that if you don't receive him, if you don't believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you stand condemned. And, and uh, if people die without the Lord Jesus, they are hopeless, helpless, and hellbound. And it's forever, gnashing of teeth and regret and remorse forever. But I tell them, but there's hope, there's help, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I share with them the gospel and I pray a prayer and it leads them, if anyone here would like to receive Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, please pray this prayer with me. And then I go on with the rest of the service for the person who passed and, and, and final prayers and, and blessings to the congregation. And, and, um, and I've only received uh, uh, glowing reports. The, 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 the funeral directors are very grateful, very thankful. Um, and I, uh, have peace in my heart because I feel in my heart I don't know I'm no one's judge neither are you none of us are but if the person is in heaven this is how I feel the person is in heaven they would want me to preach to their family if God forbid the person's in hell they would want me to preach to their family and so I take it very seriously and I and I uh, preach the gospel amen and um and so uh, I don't mind when I get phone calls. Um, sometimes I get phone calls if I would do a funeral because um, some others won't. You know, years ago I got a call from a young man. He said to me, I was reading my Bible and that I, I, uh, I have to receive Jesus as my personal Savior and Lord. Is that right? And I said, yeah, that's exactly right. And he says, and my Bible says that I need to get water baptized. Is that right? I says, yes. And he says, would you come and baptize me? And I thought for my, a second, I thought to myself, you know, what am I getting myself into? And he continued and he said, I've called and called and called and, and nobody will do it for me because I'm not a member of this church or that church or whatever. So, you know, and um, I want somebody to come and baptize me here in my home. So I thought to myself, well, you know, the, the, the uh, Philip and the evangelist, the evangelist member in the Ethiopian unit, he said, here's water. What stops me from being baptized? I said, you know what? Give me your address and, and uh, I'll come. And I've told you this story before, but uh, I went to the house and knocked on the door and a man opened the door. It looked like literally a skeleton with a little skin on him. He had on a pair of shorts. He didn't have a shirt, didn't have socks, nothing, pants, I mean, no, no shoes, just a pair of shorts. He asked me to come inside. There was a milk crate upside down on the floor, and there was another milk crate with a piece of wood on top of it. That was his, his table. I don't know if he, if he broke in. I don't know if he was transient. I have no idea. I didn't ask. His name was Ken. And I said, so Ken, um, you want me to water baptize you? And he says, yes, please. Uh, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, it was like November. It was cold. I thought, well, you know, the, the, uh, the lakes are frozen over. How are we going to do this? And he says, can we, can you do it in my bathtub? And again, I thought, well, there's water. Doesn't matter. And so I, I said to him, okay. And I said, I believe in completely putting you under because it represents dying to yourself and alive to Jesus. And he said, I understand. So that's what we did. And I baptized him in this. And I know the spirit of God. Amen. I know when the anointing is present. And I tell you, the, ent the anointing entered that bathroom. And, and the presence of God filled that place. And he came up with the biggest smile on his face. He knew that he had been touched by the presence of God. Not by me, but by God. Amen. And so I, I says to him, when was the last time you've eaten anything? Not to be disrespectful or to pry. He says, no, no, don't worry. I, I'm, I'm really good. So I left there and I went to the Acme and I got some food that you can eat right away. And I brought it to him and he was very grateful. And then uh, a day uh, went by and uh, I decided I was going to go visit him and check on him. And when I knocked on the door, there was no answer on the, at the door. And uh, a person came out of another one and says, there's nobody in that apartment. And I thought to myself, well, 
you know, God bless him. He got what he came for. And so, you know, it's one of those things where the Bible says, freely you've received, freely give. And so it's not up to us to determine who deserves or who doesn't deserve or if they can pay me or if they're a member of my, my you know, uh, select group or whatever. No, we're, we're called to go into all the world to preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, be mindful that uh, when opportunity arises, whether it's a, uh, a funeral, whether it's a, uh, a wedding, whether it's a, a person who's troubled, who's, who's having trouble, we are God's hands and feet in the earth. Amen. Uh, you, you can't do funerals and weddings unless you're ordained to do so you know, licensed and ordained, uh, but um, through a reputable, of course. You can send online to a matchbook and color an image and get an ordination. But I'm talking about ordained before God so that God recognizes your ordination. You with me? Um, so anyway, we appreciate uh, your faithfulness and your prayers. Um, I, I continue to get calls to uh, help out in that area. I, I, uh, I asked the funeral directors, what's going on? Why so many? He says, we don't know. We're just very, very busy right now. So um, we need to be praying for people that uh, I give the families a, an opportunity to receive the Lord, but we need to be praying for people before they die. Amen. So they make a decision for themselves. Uh, the Lord does not uh, desire, nor can he hardly bear it when a person dies and goes to hell. He wants all men to be saved. And we need to up our game. Amen? Amen. To pray and uh, to not be ashamed to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, I've yet to have a person come to me at the end and, and, uh, and, and give me a hard time because I preached the gospel. Amen? Uh, because the presence of God. There was one that I did um, uh, last two weeks or so ago, and the fellow wanted a, he, there, he was very stern with the funeral director. You know, he wanted a uh, minister with a sense of humor. I'm thinking to myself, I don't do jokes and things like that. It's not the environment to do so. And, uh, and then he also made, wanted to make sure of some other things. He was very specific of, of what kind of minister that he had, because he's had some bad experiences with the minister. And he's the younger brother of the brother, a fellow who died who was 97 years old, God bless him. And after I was finished, um, you know, I went over and shook his hand and, he, and he, he said to me, you did a good job, he said to me. So I'm so glad, amen, because he, he was being, you know, the funeral director came over and gave me a list of, of things uh, that he required of a minister. And, uh, and uh, I, I said, I'll, I'll do my best, amen. So uh, let's pray and let's get into the rest of our service. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for your presence and we thank you for willing hearts that we are, uh, we have been, uh, the love of God's been shed abroad in our hearts and, and you have made us um, not only obedient but willing to be a blessing, to help uh, wherever we can help, wherever there's a need uh, and we have available uh, to be a blessing, we choose to do so. It brings you honor and glory. It blesses your people, and uh, and it gives us um, validation. We are doing what you have asked us and called us to do, commissioned us to do. So to you be all glory and honor, praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's receive this morning's offering. If you are giving by check, it's Faith with Love Fellowship. And uh, those of you that are online can go to our website, fwlf.com, and give securely through a ministry called Tithely. And uh, that way you have a way of giving and supporting the work of the ministry and getting in on the, uh, the prayer that uh, God has given to us, the, um, the expectation that God will uh, pour out blessings upon you in every area of your life as well. Amen. Would you stand with me and let's make our declaration of faith. Are you ready? This is my seed. I sow it into the kingdom of God. I sow because I love God and want to see Faith with Love Fellowship continue to fulfill what God has called us to do. I believe that as I sow my seed, it shall be given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It shall come back to me in many ways. I thank you, Lord, for good opportunities coming my way. I thank you that the windows of heaven are open because of my obedience to sow my seed. 
I thank you, Lord, for the favor of God upon my life and the grace to prosper as you have promised me in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give. Those who are giving online and uh, those of you that are watching, uh, we uh, believe God with you. We hope you pray that prayer with us. Uh, but we're believing God for that to come to pass in your life as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Just stretch your hand out towards this for our, woman, for our prayer. Father, thank you for this uh, opportunity to give, to sow into the work of the ministry and to honor you because we love you. And we want to see your ministry continue and expand around the world. Also, Lord, it is the way that we prove you. We put you to the test that you will do what you say in every area. Open the windows of heaven, pour out blessings in every area of our life, in every realm of our life, social, physical, financial, emotional, spiritual as well. Hallelujah. We thank you for that. And that, Lord, you will uh, pronounce blessing upon each of us as we give. And we thank you. We praise you. We thank you. Bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Okay, well, we started last week. We didn't get real far, but that's okay. We've been talking about getting to know our Father for ourselves. We've been talking about getting to know our Father for ourselves. And, uh, you know, it's another opportunity. A, a funeral I did about two or three weeks ago, um, they told me that he, he was not a religious man, but that he, uh, but the wife was, and said, uh, would you um, please pray the Our Father, I'd like the Our Father to be included in the, in the funeral service or the Lord's Prayer. And so what I did is I used it as a text to preach about Our Father. That is, is Jesus' prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed. And Jesus invited us to call him Our Father. And then I preach the gospel and I tell them, you know, that the only way that God can be your father is if you accept the son, because it's all about the son. It's all about Jesus. What do you do with Jesus? And, and so, uh, though it was, they were very specific with just the, our father, you know, God enabled me to, to add more to it and to help them to understand, uh, you know, many people I would be willing to say without being critical or judgmental, pray the, our father all the time, but they don't take a, a moment to think about what it says and um, and to trust him to do what he says he will do Jesus gave it to us as a pattern to pray and, uh, and it's not supposed to be the only one it's a pattern to pray and the only part of it deliver us from the evil one you know the Lord has done that he's delivered us and we thank God that he's delivered us from the evil one amen Hallelujah for that. So anyway, uh, that's where this study came from. How very important it is, I told you, building confidence in him through his word and then energizing ourselves or equipping ourselves through prayer and specifically one-on-one -on -one fellowship prayer with the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that we are to pray always with all manner of prayer and supplication in the spirit with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. So there is petition and there's supplication, there's intercession. There's many different kinds of prayer. We've taught on it before. It's on in the archives of Facebook and on YouTube as well. But this is specifically praying for one-on-one -on -one fellowship. It's a prayer of sanctification, consecration. As we said, I am yours, you are mine. And, and to be able to talk to God, to be able to uh, have exchange with Almighty God, He promises that His blessing and His strength and His peace. You know, one of my instructors used to say, some things are better caught than taught. If you understand that, you know. Uh, how many know that if you spend time around people who are dishonest and people who curse a lot and foul languages and talk about, you know, uh, uh, infidelity and all kinds of things, you, you know, it's going to affect you. you. You can stay strong and you can try, but it's going to affect you um, because the, it's some things are easier caught than taught. And uh, but how many know you spend time with God? You spend time in his presence. You spend time with brothers and sisters who are on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. And you'll catch that 
spirit. You'll catch those things that God has for you. Amen. The Bible says, you, you know, if you seek me, you'll find me if you seek me with all your heart. And so it's, it's not that he's aloof or trying to be distant from us, but he wants to know, is it worth it to you? How valuable am I to you? with me and how much time you spend with the Lord is totally up to you he wants you to spend as much time as you possibly can he's calling us to dwell in the secret place to abide under the shadow of the Almighty are you with me and we can do that if he didn't tell us we could if he didn't tell us then we can't you know what I'm understand if we couldn't do it he'd tell us but he says we can so we can so it's a matter of staying in that app attitude staying in that mindset that that you are mine and I am yours and, and and Jesus of course is our example in all things and Jesus basically showed us how to do it Jesus stayed in constant fellowship with his father he said I only say what I hear my father say I only do what I see my father do he's in constant fellowship with God so he's letting us know it is attainable it is possible to do so and that's the greatest blessing of all. See, everywhere Jesus went, he knew what to say to those who tried to trick him, to those who tried to who to try to betray him. To he was he was on top of it all. Why? Because he was you know receiving wisdom and, and strength and courage and and peace from his father. It's a lifeline, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Hallelujah. You know. Excuse me. Probably the best way I can describe it in, in two different ways, I guess. Uh, one way is when children are in their mother's womb. They're connected by an umbilical cord. So that child is not feeding themselves. They're being fed through their, their mother. Truthfully, they're actually, you know, removing waste, not by themselves, it's through their mother. That cord is their lifeline. Blood is flowing through. Oxygen is flowing through. Everything that that infant needs to survive and to grow and to develop until they're born is being supplied by their mother through the umbilical cord. And then, you know, it's a big deal when the child is born, they cut the umbilical cord. There's no longer a need for that cord. And, but it's a great understanding of our dependence on God. Amen. Uh, another is, you know, they, they are divers that go down with scuba gears, meaning they have tanks on their back and they can go pretty far down. But the ones who go all the way down in those big suits with the heavy, heavy boots and those big round helmets and all, they don't have a means of, of carrying tanks large enough for them to breathe down that far so what do they do they have a line that is dropped down uh, which supplies air directly into their helmets and so they can breathe normally but it's not because of tanks and they're not breathing on their own their their oxygen or air in the proper mix and everything else is sent down to them through that lifeline and so we have some very practical examples of a lifeline Amen. And Jesus said it. This is where we left off last time. I am the vine. You are the branches. So he is the lifeline. And there will never be a time of being cut from the lifeline. There'll never be a time of coming to the surface and not any longer needing the lifeline. No, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And so it's very important that we remember that we must stay in the in the vine. And I last week I mentioned to you about um, that uh, the idea of grafting that you can take a a tree that is producing well and it's healthy and strong and through proper scientific methods you can you can graft it slice it and put different branches from other trees that still have life that have buds even on them into that tree and they will produce and the interesting thing is they will if it's say for instance if it's an apple tree and you graft in a pear branch that branch will produce pears even though it's coming and drawing its nourishment from an apple tree. And the same thing, you it's probably was one of the most amazing trees, I would imagine, but can you imagine and say you have 50 different uh, things growing on one tree? 
because somebody knows what they're doing in the area of grafting and they're grafting plums and peaches and, and apricots and, and nectarines and, and oranges and lemons and limes and you know everything that grows on a tree and you say to them well what's the main tree oh it's an oak tree well, oak trees don't produce fruit they produce acorns that's their fruit but I'm talking about fruit you with me and, and the Lord is a master husbandman, meaning husbandman is a is that is everything having to do with farming and people are his harvest. Amen. And he knows how to graft us into the vine. So it doesn't matter. All I said before, our nationality, the cover of our skin, what we've done, who we know, all the other things. If we come to Jesus, he is able to, or I should say, if we come to our Father in the name of Jesus, amen, the, the Father is able to graft us into Jesus. And then we produce fruit. Hallelujah. It's interesting, I never thought of it before, but we don't all produce the same fruit, even though we're given the ideas of the fruit. I'm gonna talk about that in just a few moments. But each of us have a little bit of, we have a different personality. We have different, you know, uh, flavors to us. You know, the way that we are, the way that we relate to people, the way people relate to us. You know, you can relate to some people that I necessarily may not be able to, and, and, and you might be able to reach, you know, your sphere of influence is maybe different from mine. And you have favor with, with people that, especially like your family, your extended family, your community, the people that know you, that you've built a relationship with, you have opportunity to be a blessing in those arenas. Amen? And God wants you to produce these fruit that we're going to talk about, but kind of in with your flavor. Are you with me? Um, here's an example. Not to be disrespectful in any way, shape, or form. But you know, depending on where you live in the world, you can have one uh, meat, for instance, uh, say it's sausage. Let's use sausage as an example. Uh, in some places, uh, they, they like their sausage one way and you go to another region and sausage to them is something else. Uh, you go to a yet another region and sausage is something else. Um, uh, you know, in, in German uh, places, restaurants especially, everything is worse, rock worse and, and all these other things. They're basically all different forms of sausage. Now I'm biased, of course, because I like Italian hot sausage, very specific sausage. And, uh, and but other people, you know, when I was growing up, my other people like the sweet sausage. And then some people like the hard sausage. It's, it's, it's cured and it's hard. And, and all kinds, sausage is basic. But when you, and then breakfast sausage, the patties, and then the links. And, you know, sausage can be so many different things depending on regions, where you're from. All right. A kielbasa is, some people call that sausage, but it's really not, but it is. If you go to a, to a pork store or a beef store, sausage will come in pretty much every shape and size and range. And depending on, on uh, where you are, it, it takes on almost a life of its own. Are you with me? I use that just as an example. You can do it the same way with a lot of other things. Um, but the point of the matter is each of them are a little bit different flavor. And that's okay. God loves individuality. In, in a manner of speaking. He wants us to be ourselves, to be changed into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, but without losing your flavor. Right. Amen? Yeah. You, you are the salt. You are the light. Uh, you know, you are the preservative. You are the, the flavor enhancer in your sphere of influence. Amen? Amen? But nowhere does it say we're called to be clones of one another. Hallelujah. We're being changed into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you notice even the apostles when they were there, uh, John was different from Peter. And, and, and Luke was different from, from Paul. And, and Barnabas was different from you know, Silas and these different flavors, different in, in, you know, personalities. But they were all uh, born again. They were all covered in the blood and they were all sent to be a blessing to the people in the world. Amen. So uh, that's where we left off, I believe, last time, uh, J uh, John uh, 15 and verse 5, um, how the branches don't try to bear fruit. It just happens because they draw from the vine. 
So we should not have to produce fruit. And again, fruit is born on the branches, it's not born on the, on the vine, it's on the branches. And people, uh, the, the, the fruit is not for the branch, the fruit is for others to come and partake of it. And uh, so that's why he uses these examples. Uh, so a branch uh, is useful and can produce fruit, but only when it's grafted into the vine. And then we're told if, if we're cut off from the vine, either by our own choosing or by the other things, you know, the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches, and the devil comes and throws thorns and, you know, come on, good ground kind of a thing, right? If we are in any way because of those things, fear of man and, and what people might say, what people might do, and the cares of life and all, we can be separated from the vine. And then we're, we're warned very sternly that you cannot survive separated from the vine. That, that, that branch will still have life in it for a period of time. It might even bud, but it cannot continue to bear fruit if it has been separated from the vine. But then the good news is this, that if we are separated, are you with me? But there is still life. In other words, it's a quick work. It's not a long, you know, process. If for whatever reason we get separated from the vine, if we are grafted back in while there's still life in the branch, there's, there's hope. Amen? But if the branch goes dead and the buds die, because it's been separated for a period of time. The Bible says it's of no value. It's be tossed into the furnace, into the fire. So he's talking about people. He's not talking about branches. He's talking about people. And he's telling us how very important it is that we stay in the vine. That we don't let these things I mentioned, the cares of life, what people say, and, 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 and persecution even. He said persecution is going to arise for my sake, for the word's sake. But don't let it separate you from me. Because if you separate yourself from me, you will die. Apart from him, there's no hope. Apart from him, there's no life. Are you with me? There's just fire. That's what awaits those who are apart from the Lord Jesus. I can't make it any simpler than that. Are you with me? But it's not God's will that any perish, but that all come to salvation and graft and allow God to graft them into the vine, the Lord Jesus Christ, and then stay, stay planted, abide, amen, and dwell, stay, hallelujah. The Bible talks a lot about, you know, consistency. It talks a lot about a hold fast to the confession of your faith without wavering. It's reminding you about that rope story that I told you earlier, you know, how it's all about what you do with the rope. And, and if you don't want to die, you're going to get a hold of that rope very securely. Are you with me? And make sure that your hold on that rope doesn't slip. You've heard me tell you before, you remember the fellow that was on the dirigible and he, they thought he was going to die to his death and he kept just swinging from the rope and they said, how did you hold on so long? He says, I didn't. I wrapped it around myself and I tied myself to it. So it wasn't me holding the rope, the rope was holding me. Amen? So it's not us holding on to Jesus, it's us trusting every moment, every day that he's strong enough to hold us. Amen? And just having the want to having the desire to, being appreciative, being grateful, being thankful. These are all keys, how we stay connected to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love that. It says, praying always with all manner of prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I think each and every one of us crave that, and I believe it's because we are made in the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't ask anything for the kindness that we show other people, but it is nice to receive a thank you. It is nice to say, you know what, I appreciate what you did. Are you with me? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, amen. My, my children have a habit when we finish eating and uh, they thank us. Sometimes they, you know, they kiss us and tell us thank you. And I always say the same thing, it's my pleasure. But how many know 
That means a lot. Amen? Because our shopping is, we're thinking of them more than we think of ourselves. That's what parents do. You think about them more. You make meals based on what they like. You know, when you're first married, you, you based on what you like, husband and wife, but once children come into the picture, it all becomes about them. You know, you start saving money for them. You, you start doing what's necessary because you're thinking, you know, they have they besides the Lord Jesus and, and your your husband or your wife, they're the greatest blessing that you could ever receive. You with me? And so the only thing you, you would hope, you can't demand it, but the only thing you would hope is that they would be grateful, that they would be appreciative and that they would be responsive and let, let you know that, you know? You know, Christmas is coming and we go out of our way, like many of you do, to buy Christmas presents things. Would you think of it if, if, if there was no thank you? If there was no, you know what, I appreciate it? It hurts because it's not right. You're not asking, you don't have to pay me for the Christmas presents, you know? In a matter of speaking, you didn't earn them Right? I'm doing it because I want to be a blessing to you and bless you. But just to say thank you would be, you know, a sign of appreciation. That would mean a lot to me. Are you with me? Yeah. We, we told our kids, uh, cover your ears if you don't want to hear about Santa Claus, you know. But we told our kids long ago when they were first little that we were not going to give credit, you know, for our love and our sacrifice to some, you know, fat, jolly guy. So we let them know at an early age, we buy the presents and we buy them with you in mind. And our whole desire is to bless you and to, and to let you know that we love you and we appreciate you, amen? And, and we're grateful for the choices that you're making. So we're gonna, you with me, you with me? And their only, their only response is thank you. That's, that's all we need, that's all we need. But it means a lot, amen? amen? And that's the way God is, hallelujah. He doesn't need it but he sure appreciates it. Amen? He, he likes to know that he's still um, cared about and he still matters to us and we appreciate what he's done for us. Amen? The Bible talks about that when we get to heaven, uh, there's going to be great rejoicing and there's going to be shouting. One of my favorite parts of scripture in the book of Revelation that the Lord is worthy. Remember where they look for somebody and John is crying because there's none worthy to take the book? And yet from out of the humanity comes one who is the, the lamb who was slain, the lion, the tribe of Judah, the Lord Jesus. And he goes up and he takes the book and, and everybody begins, everybody, that's you, me, and everybody else begins to shout and rejoice, amen, that worthy is the lamb to receive glory and honor and power and strength and might and majesty. Hallelujah. It's going to be amazing. All that is, is we recognize you and we want you to know we appreciate you. That's all that is. Amen. He already knows he is all that. Amen. He already, he don't have to be told that he's worthy or he's wonderful. It's we who need to acknowledge it. And we need to say, I now understand that you are wonderful and you are worthy and you are deserving of glory and honor and praise because you have blown our minds with how wonderful you are, how faithful you are, how considerate you are. Come on, right? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's all he asks, and, and I don't think it's much to be asked. Our, our motto of scripture says that we, uh, that we uh, present ourselves and live as living sacrifices, amen, uh, hallelujah, and that uh, we, be we not be conformed to this world, but we be transformed by the renewal of our mind, which is our reasonable service. Amen, that we live completely for him, sold out for him, is just reasonable after what he has done and not only done but continues to do in our lives amen yeah. pastor karen said it years ago and i never forgot he says when he was on the cross you were on his mind and it goes back to his children when he was on the cross all he was thinking about was you and every other human being on the planet but he has the ability to see you well wait a minute pastor nick i wasn't even born yet but he has the ability to see you amen in the mind of god god knows the end from the beginning he is all knowing he is all seeing are you with me hallelujah 
And so though you were not even yet formed in your mother's 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 go, go on back, you know what I mean? God saw you and on the cross he saw you. And he just saw, saw your children and your descendants. Amen? He saw it all. And the Bible says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And I always say the number one joy was, was honoring his father. But I, I like to think of it this way too. You and I, amen, and everybody else on the planet, past, present, future, are the joy that was set before him. And because of that joy, he endured what he had to endure. Amen? He said to his father in the garden, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But when he knew that it was not possible, then he endured it. Amen? Then he went forward. He walked right into it. He told him, you can't take my life. You don't have the ability to. I surrender my life. Because that's the price it will take to purchase or redeem mankind out of every kindred and tongue. Are you with me? So from the cross, he sought all of us. And he endured. They mocked him. They ridiculed him. He, he, he hung naked to the world, embarrassed and humiliated. And they told him, if you are the son of God, come down from that place. Call the angels. And you know, he didn't do it. Could he have? Yes. Absolutely, yes. But he chose to endure because it was for his children's sake. Amen? Boy, we, we should be more grateful than we are, shouldn't we? We should be more appreciative. Hallelujah. And just bless him and thank him and thank him and thank him. Hallelujah. You with me, my brothers and sisters? Glory to God. So, um, hallelujah. Oh, we think sometimes how we can, how we can touch God. You know, I can't touch him. How, how, can I, how can I caress his face? How can I touch his heart? How, how, can, I, how can I express my, my, my uh, gratefulness, my appreciation? I feel as though I, I just am not able to do it. I'm not capable of doing it. But the Bible tells us that the praises of our lips, amen, being thankful, being grateful, these are literally ways that we pour our love on him. We, we, we stroke him, we bless him, we kiss him. Amen? Through the meditations of our hearts and the words of our mouths, how we respond to him. And the, the purer the response, the more perfect the, the uh, sacrifice, so to speak. Amen? The acknowledgement is. Are you with me? If it's pure out of your heart and you're just responding to his mercy and his kindness and his goodness, he just is receiving blessing and blessing and, and amen. And it becomes almost physical. Uh, you know, he is a spirit, but it becomes, and Jesus is, a, is, is physical. He's a spirit, but he's also, you with me? And, and it actually becomes a part where it actually touches him and affects him. Think about it. We have that ability to do so. So don't withhold it. Amen. Be, be, very, be a grateful person. Be a thankful person. Be appreciative. So I'll do this as quickly as I can. But uh, this is from Galatians chapter 5. If you want to take a look at it. Galatians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5. I'm just going to read them, but then probably next week I'll either go through them slower or make a print. I'll probably do both. I'll probably do a printout so you can have it. Take it with you. Um, and also I'll go through them maybe a little slower, Lord willing. So Galatians chapter 5, well, let's talk about this fruit that uh, is born. Uh, what is it exactly? I mentioned peaches and plums and apricots and things like that, but we're not talking about literal fruit. We're talking about spiritual fruit. And so Galatians chapter 5, uh, the Bible says, um, hallelujah, Amen. The beginning of the chapter, I wasn't going to read it. I want to jump to 22, but the first couple of lines in chapter 5, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It's pretty stern, isn't it? Amen. Stand fast. It's going to require us to stand fast. Hallelujah. To hold on, to hold fast. Why? Because we have an adversary. We're told throughout the Word of God because we have an adversary. And he's going to try to break that hold. 
He's going to try to to get a hold of your of your your thought life and your tongue so that you don't hold fast, that you let it go, that you not be grateful, you don't be thankful, you don't be appreciative. You know, because you you know he he talks you into feeling as though you know what are you crazy talking into space? There's no God after all. Come on, the list goes on and on. And because you have an adversary. That's why the Bible says you're going to have to hold fast. You, you're going to have to stand fast. You're going to have to believe. Even though it goes against what you see, what you hear, what you feel. Amen. That's called faith. And you have to determine in your heart above all things that God is. Amen. Amen. That God is. The most sure, the most guaranteed thing I know is that God is. That Jesus is Savior and Lord. It's more real to me than the pew that I'm sitting in. More real to me than the car that I drove and I'll drive away. More real to me than the house that I live in. You know why? Because all of these things are temporary. But God and His Word and His Spirit and power of eternity in the name of Jesus is eternal. But the devil is an adversary. And he's going to try like he did in the garden to talk us out of it. That's why we have to press in. That's why we have to stand fast. That's why we have to make up our minds. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed. You know why we're ashamed? Or we're easily talked out of it. We're going to have to make up our mind. No, no, no. There's no talking me out of this. I'm not really even interested in a conversation with you. You with me? Because I know that I know that I know that I know. Brother Hagin used to talk about that. That's how, that's what revelation is. That you know, that you know, that you know, that you know, you cannot be compromised. You cannot be, you're not open to negotiation. It is the truth. And the truth is non-negotiable. Are you with me? Now, we're not talking about Temporal truth. We're not talking about, you know, in the court of law. How many know people lie all the time in law? Yeah, I swear, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And, and to break that is perjury and it's worthy of going to prison and yet people do it all the time. How many know, even when you talk to people, they give you truth, but from their point of view. They want to make themselves look good. So they omit certain things and then they present themselves in such a way where why you think, wow, you are just so wait, great, wonderful. No, no, no. That's all temporal truth. That's all of the earth truth. Open to negotiation. Changes every day. But eternal truth is a person. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. And he reveals himself through his word. So the word of God is truth. And it's eternal truth. And nothing can change it. And nothing can, can in any way, shape, or form uh, uh, manipulate it or, or corrupt it. He says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word is eternal. Amen? He's exalted his word above his name. And his name is the name above every name. Amen? So we have the word of God, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. We have eternal truth. So that's why we're told, stand fast. Hold on. Amen. Believe. Glory to God. Because it will it can affect every other arena. It affects our present. It affects our future. It affects our the temporal in which we live. Amen. He says you have not because you ask not. In other words, put the eternal to work in your life. And let it change your temporal. Amen. Don't let your temporal change that which is eternal. Well, you know. The college I went to says the Bible's, you know, old news, no longer relevant. No, 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 don't, don't you dare let the temporal truth, it's a, it's a lie from the pit of hell anyway, change the eternal. Amen? Always keep the eternal in a place of honor and dignity where it belongs because it is truly the word of God to you. God's talking to you. This is who you are. This is who I am. This is what I have done for you. This is what you now have. This is what you can now do. Amen? And it's all given to us throughout the Word of God. So, again, it's not this fruit that we're going to talk about is not natural fruit. It's not simply emotional. It's spiritual. It's supernatural. And it's full of power. As other people 
eat the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, from our lives. It's not natural. It's not emotional. Oh, I feel better because I ate that. No, no, no. It's spiritual. It's supernatural. And it's full of power. I don't have time to go through each of them. I'll try my best next time. But the first one is love. How many know love never fails? Amen. Talk about being spiritual, supernatural, and full of power. Amen? Love can break the most stubborn heart, the most resistant, the most resilient, the most demonic love. Amen? That man on that island who is full of demons, he came face to face with love personified that day. Truthfully, all the fruit of the Spirit, but he came face to face with love. What else do you call it to go from a safe place, get on a ship, go through a storm that's intended to take your life and everybody on the ship, go to a region where there's one guy who's out of control, minister to this one guy, set him free, then get back in the boat and go all the way back. You would say, is that what, what would make that worth the trip? Jesus says, love. Are you with me? Love. Doesn't fail. Hallelujah. Will not fail. So walk. What is the greatest commandment of all that we are to do? Walk in love. Love God and love your neighbor. Love. Number one. Number two is joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy is not an emotional state. Joy is, a, is based on who you are and, and whose you are. Hallelujah. And you have his word. So you can have joy even in dark, in dark situations. That's right. Because he's never going to fail you, never forsake you, never leave you. Greater is he who's in you than he is in the world. And therefore you can have joy even in tumultuous and, and, and difficult circumstances and situations. And, and then you bring the word of God to bear against your situation, whatever it may be. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You know, circumstance, situation, you're telling me it's, oh, it's impossible. You're telling me it's dark. You're telling me I can never do anything, but I have God's verdict already. I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. So whatever your name is, I'm letting you know I come against you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. David came against Goliath. How many know that was insanity? All right. Goliath is a seasoned champion, killed lots and lots of people. David is a shepherd boy and he comes against Goliath and it's one of my favorite stories because this kid won't shut up. Amen? The giant is spewing filth of every kind and David will not shut up. He keeps saying what God's going to do, what God's going to do, what God's going to do. And the enemy, Goliath, keeps saying, but I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And this is what I say is going to happen. And this is what I say is going to happen. And David's like, no, you're wrong. This is what God's going to do. This is what, not what David's going to do. This is what God's going to do. Why? Because I know him. Because I have his word. Amen? And, and what wound up at the end of the day? Here's David standing on a headless body, you know, holding Goliath's sword and holding Goliath's head in his hands. In other words, this one will trouble us no more. Amen? Amen. Now that's David. He's an Old Testament saint. How much know that you can do that and more? Amen. If you won't stop talking. Amen? Amen? If you won't shut up when the adversary, whatever it is, starts telling you, this is good, this is going to look, it looks bad. There's no hope. There's nothing the doctors can do. And this goes on and on. You have to do, you have to identify the Goliaths in your life. Amen. And then do exactly what the word of God says do. Speak at them. Amen. Amen. Declare whose you are. Amen. Declare what he's done. Declare that he is greater. Amen. And that there's nothing impossible to God, nothing impossible to those who believe. And we say it out loud, I believe. Amen. And that, was, that which is eternal will swallow up that which is temporal. 
in the Old Testament when Moses and Aaron went before Pharaoh. Remember, God told him, he said to him, How, what happens if Pharaoh doesn't believe us? And he says, what's in your hand? And he says, a, 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 you know, a walking stick. And he says, when, when you get there, if they don't believe you, throw your stick to the ground. How many of that's faith? You know what normally happens when you take a stick, a walking stick made of wood, throw it to the ground? It goes clank, it's the ground. But in this particular case, it turned into a serpent. And I love this story because, yes, the devil can counterfeit up to a point. And this story in, of Moses is a, is a perfect example. The magicians of the day, the demon-possessed individuals, could do certain things because of the, uh, the ability to imitate, okay? So they were able to produce through magic and whatever else, uh, demonic situations, produce serpents as well. Uh, but eventually their power ran out because there's only one true and living God. Are you with me? But I love the story because what happened, you know, Pharaoh kind of mocked God, mocked Moses and Aaron, because when they threw their, their rod on the ground, the serpent appeared. When the magicians did the same, serpents appeared, but then something happened that totally blew Pharaoh's mind. Read the story. The serpent that that Aaron's rod, Moses' rod, had had uh, had turned into a serpent, devoured the other three, or four, or how many it was? One hundred thirty thousand billion of them. Doesn't matter. You understand? You have to make up your mind that God is greater, and that none can stand against Him. It's part of we have to determine in our heart that's the truth. But I love the story because though the devil tried. The, the serpent that was basically a, a rod devoured the other. How many know God, the eternal, has the ability to devour the temporal? Amen. Amen? So when you're faced with the temporal and it seems like serpents and it seems like you're in danger and there's fear and worry and dread and all that stuff starts coming, you know, it's like this. You know, what do you do with the rope? What do you do with the name of Jesus? What do you do with Jesus? It's what do you do with the word? You've got to let the word out. The Bible says, where is it? It's in your heart. It's in your mouth. It's on the tip of your tongue. Just open your mouth and let it out. No, that's not right. The word of God says, and you speak the word of God at the circumstance and situation. Amen? Well, how long, Pastor Nick, until, the, until you get victory? Hallelujah. Until, until the day breaks. Until the dawn rises. Amen? You stay after it. Why? Because you have an adversary. There's a guy on YouTube, I don't know much about him. I really don't know. But I see them from time to time. He does a lot of arm wrestling. I don't know, I think he's a Marine or whatever. He wears sunglasses, I see it. I, I, I don't really watch it. I took off some things off my phone because I don't want to be distracted by them. But it's, it's this guy that does arm wrestling. And I see him arm wrestle guys a lot stronger than him. And he'll, he'll lock them in. And it's all official. It's watched by judges a certain way you got to do bye-bye. And he'll stand there and he'll just hold them. And he's kind of shaking his head looking at him. You're doing a great job, you know? You're doing a great job. That person's exerting. Sometimes the arm is twice as big as his arm. And then finally, you know, when it's down to it, he just puts them to the ground and walks away. You know, it's almost you're watching him and you think, can this be real? And he says, yeah, because like everything else, it's more technique than it's brute strength. It's just the way it is. A lot of stuff today, people just can, they can't do it. Why? Because they don't have the technique. People who can lift a lot of weight, you know, it's not natural, normal to lift that kind of weight. It's all about how you do it. It's all about using your leg muscles, using your back muscles, using everything. You can't do it just using your arms. You can't just do it using your hands and expect. No, it's everything. Every part of your body's got to be involved. And it takes practice. It takes practice. It takes practice. You're working on technique. Your posture has to be right. If your posture is not right, you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to break something. You're with me. And God is expert in every area, and he'll teach you technique. When I was at Rama, I'm getting away from myself. That's okay. We'll pick it up. When I was at Rama, Patsy uh, Caminetti, at the time, 
Patsy Bierman was in charge of prayer school. And uh, I was there, I believe it was a first year student. I didn't really know much. I was, I was learning, I was, I was wanting to know. And, and she got up and we were praying. And, and she says, uh, somebody uh, has uh, something to act out. So come on and obey God. And um, we were all waiting. And a part of me was saying, Lord, don't ch don't pick me, don't pick me, don't pick me. You know, as, I'm as young, first year student. I don't want to embarrass myself. What happens if I'm wrong? You know, the whole thing. So anyway, so um, we waited a little while. And then all of a sudden from the back came this fellow. And um, he's a wonderful minister of the gospel today. He's doing a great job for God. He came from the back and he comes up to the front. And he's doing this Indian war dance. Ooh, 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 with his tomahawk, you know. And he comes up and he spins around and he's doing this thing. And he's chopping here, he's chopping there and everything else. And we're all like, what in the world is this, you know. So after when he's all done, he winds up and he goes back to his seat and he sits down. And Patsy says, she's waiting. She says, someone else says something. And we waited. And then all of a sudden this person got up from the back came up kind of slinky quiet came up stood there and fast like anything they went and then walked back and sat down and again i'm sitting there going to myself what it's what in the world is this you know and she goes on to teach she says the bible says and she goes on she says that that first illustration was totally wrong. And my heart went out to the poor brother over there who did, I thought to myself, better you than me, dude, you know? But then she did this, she says, but you were led by the spirit. Now we're all like my champion, my brother, my buddy, you know? You were led by the spirit to demonstrate something and it took a lot of faith for him to do that, to demonstrate something that was wrong. He said, that's not a picture of prayer, to be chopping wildly in every direction. No. The second who came out showed us that it's much more about technique. And so here's the problem. All right, right here. Here's the problem right here. So what good is it tomahawking and dancing your way up here, chopping and all around here? It's all, it's not availing. It's not doing, it's not making a difference. But the other person came out, wasted no energy, came forward and she dealt with the situation and went back to their seat. And she said, that's called being led by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows where the problem is. So why pray and cry and moan and, and, and you know? And we were all like, this might have been the coolest thing. We, we were all like, this was a, a looking at each other, you know? This is the coolest thing I ever saw. It's just demonstrations of how the Holy Spirit works. That's what that class was all about, and it was awesome. We loved it. We're learning so much because that's the way the Holy Spirit is. He doesn't want us to expend a lot of energy, waste a lot of time going around in circles. You know, I went to a prayer meeting. I'm exhausted. I can't even. No, it shouldn't be. It should be we pray in the Spirit. And when God gives us direction and we know exactly what we need to do, we do what we need to do. We, let, we release the Word of God. And the Word of God does it, His work. Some people, I'm getting way out of, out of this, but it's okay, Paris. You know, some people have more faith in their prayers. They have more faith in, you know, in their giftings, in their abilities. Much prayer. You know, I'm a prayer warrior or I'm an intercessor. Hey, it's, that's not what it's about, amen? It's about following the Holy Spirit, amen? amen? And I'm not one for calling him Holy Spirit. It's way too informal as far as I'm concerned. He's the Holy Spirit, amen? There's none like him. He's the only one. He's, not, he, he's my friend, but he's not my, you know, buddy. It's a little too in, uh, informal for me, just personal. Are you with me? And so I call him Holy Spirit. You know, I speak to him, Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you. Lead me, guide me, help me to be effective in, in what I do. But there's, there's reverence there, there's, there's, there's awe there, there's, there's honor there. Are you with me? Always. And it's nothing about me, it has nothing to do with me. 
It's not because I'm, I'm called to a ministry of prayer. We're all called to a ministry of prayer. Yeah, God does anoint certain people to pray, but more times than not, it's to teach prayer. Like Margie Florence, one of the best. Amen. And Mary Alice Islip is another Rhema grad. These are women of faith and men as well. Uh, Reverend Hockaday and, and Leanne Sosby, they're going to be at Redeeming Love coming up. Amen. A prayer seminar. It's going to be powerful. These are people who know how to pray, but their main purpose is to teach others to pray. They're not going to stand up and say, I am a, you know, massive prayer warrior. So, you know, uh, fear me and respect me. It's not about that. It's I'm a servant and, and, and I'm commissioned by God to help mobilize prayer in the body of Christ because we need to be praying like never before. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, and so anyway, uh, joy was number two. Peace, of course, peace. We're not talking about emotional, we're talking about spiritual, all right? Long suffering, long suffering in, in one way of speaking is patience. How many know it's a powerful tool and it's something that is not very evident in the world in which we live. Kindness is huge. Goodness, good for the sake of good. Not because there's somehow something in it and we can get paid for it. Faithfulness, so important to God. Gentleness and self-control, which is temperance. Now these are fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. We'll talk more about them next time. But this, this is fruit for you to enjoy, but it's mainly for others to partake of so that they can get a, a taste for what God is all about. Amen? Because God is love and joy and peace, long-suffering, kindness, loving kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, temperance. That's God. And he wants to reveal himself through what? Through us. Amen? He's the vine. We're the branches. The fruit grows on the end of the branches. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, Father, we thank you for the day. As always, we thank you for the, the word of God. It's life to us, health to our, the very marrow of our bones. We thank you for the opportunity to share this gospel with the folks here in the church, those that are watching today on Facebook, later on YouTube. We thank you that the, 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 the sharing of your word brings life. And life is being born in hearts and minds and spirits, oh God. We thank you circumstances are lining up, hallelujah. We thank you for powers of darkness are being, uh, are being set back in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, the gospel, the glorious gospel is going forward in power and demonstration. We believe it, Father. We thank you that giants are falling in Jesus' name. We believe that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is rising, hallelujah, in the knowledge of whose they are and who they are and what they have and what they can do. And we thank you, Lord, that we are taking it seriously and we are doing the work. We are believing what the word says and we are watching and seeing the world affected because of our influence as we are grafted into the vine. So it's you through us to the world. And we honor you, we praise you, we bless you. As always, traveling mercies, as we return to our homes, we thank you, Lord, that your blessing is upon us as we go. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you so very much for coming out. We appreciate you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.